When Debbie gave birth to a black baby, her husband Clive accused her of cheating and asked for a divorce, refusing to be a part of that child's life. Three years later, a sudden illness prompted him to take a DNA test, and the results left them speechless. Debbie and Clive were an ordinary suburban couple living an ordinary life in a suburban town. Although times were sometimes tough, they were happy. For the first five years of the marriage, it was only the two of them. They were both passionate people with temperamental characters, but they understood each other and their marriage was happy. One of the things Clive felt very strongly about was trust. Growing up, he often overheard his parents arguing while they thought he was asleep. Although he did not understand all that they were arguing about, he somehow understood that there were some trust issues. This resulted in his father moving out of the house from time to time, but luckily always returning after a few days. Although his parents were still married, he did not want to expose his children to that kind of turmoil. Clive was the oldest of four children. Despite his parents arguing, his childhood had been happy and he had a good relationship with his brothers. He had always been the ringleader of the four, planning all their mischief. His memories of growing up were generally blissful, and he couldn't wait for his own children to experience the camaraderie that came with having siblings. After being married for five years, Debbie decided she was ready to start filling her nest with little McClares. They would often joke that they would love to have a football team, but they also wanted to provide for their family to the best of their ability. Debbie wanted at least four kids, and Clive wanted to settle for three. The couple decided that destiny would provide the final answer. Within the next few months, Debbie got pregnant very easily. The couple welcomed a beautiful blonde little girl into their family and decided to call her Margaret after Clive's mother. Debbie enjoyed the first year of Margaret's life, and then she convinced Clive that she was ready for a second child. She wanted her children to be friends. Debbie was the middle child in her family. She had grown up on a farm and loved the rural environment, but the farm animals had been her only friends. Her older brother was seven years older than her, and by the time she could remember, he was off to boarding school. Although she knew he was her brother, they had very little in common and very little of a relationship. To her, he was the boy that visited the farm during holiday times and was helping her father from dusk till dawn in the fields. Debbie also had a younger sister, but then again, she was about five years younger than her and had always been a very sickly child. Her mother had dedicated much of her time to her sister and the two of them never really played together. Debbie associated her with the emotion of fear, always afraid of bringing germs to the baby who had a very poor immune system. Because Debbie always played out in the fields and with the animals, she was a risk to her sister and therefore mostly avoided the room where she lay all day. So even though she had siblings, she had never really experienced what it meant to share a childhood with other kids and was desperate for her own child to live that kind of joy. So within two years of Margaret's birth, Ben was born. This little boy looked very much like his father and became a shadow to Clive. From a very young age, he mimicked the behavior of his dad. There was no doubt that the two of them had a special bond. Some of the people in town preferred to refer to Ben as Little Clive, which soon became his nickname. The following year, Rose was born. She and Margaret looked very much alike. If it wasn't for the age gap of around four years, they could have been twins. One could hardly distinguish between their baby pictures. Their fair skins, inherited from their mother Debbie, made a stark contrast with their dark, wavy hair. They even looked a little like porcelain dolls. Life was good. Clive had three children and was happy with the state of things at home. To him, the family was complete. Although Debbie would never go behind her husband's back, there was still a longing in her heart for another child. She wanted to experience that special phase after birth when the baby is so completely dependent on the mother for the final time. The couple often had this discussion, but they could never come to the same conclusion. Therefore, Debbie decided to honor her husband and settle with the three kids they had. But one morning, soon after that final discussion, Debbie woke up with a very familiar feeling in her heart. 
She felt in her body that she was expecting again. Despite taking precautions to prevent pregnancy, she did not know how her husband would react, but she also knew that she had to share her suspicions with him. At first, Clyde was a bit distant upon hearing the news. But Debbie reminded him that they agreed on allowing destiny to determine the number of children they would have one day. She had not planned this pregnancy, therefore this was how things were supposed to be. The family settled into their new rhythm of life while waiting for baby number four to arrive. Doctors confirmed that the baby was healthy, and after a few months they could also reveal that the couple was expecting a boy. Clive started getting excited about having another son as his relationship with Ben was something he enjoyed very much. Nobody expected the birth of this fourth child to bring such disruption and turmoil to the family. What was supposed to become yet another memorable day for the McLare family became a day of destruction. Clive eagerly stood by his wife's side, waiting for his son to take his first breath. The moment that Ryan was born, Clive stormed out of the delivery room shouting, I knew you tricked me. A loving husband would never tell his wife something like this. But Clive's reaction was somewhat justifiable. Although little Ryan was perfectly healthy, he had black skin. Debbie was equally shocked and couldn't understand how something like this could happen. Clive was the only man she had ever been with, so this was his son. Then why was he black? In the months that followed, the town gossip increased. Clive left the family and started divorce proceedings. Everybody was speculating about a possible affair that Debbie had with a black man. Nobody believed her story that the baby was Clive's. Although Clive promised to provide financial support, he did not want to have anything to do with his unfaithful wife. He also clearly stated that he only wanted to see the three oldest children. Even though Debbie offered to test Ryan's DNA, Clive assured that he would never want anything to do with the baby. Debbie was devastated, but continued to raise her four children to the best of her ability. Three years after the divorce, Clive developed some medical problems that could be inherited, and the doctors requested that his children be tested for a possible DNA match. Debbie seized the opportunity to test the DNA of all four children against that of Clive to prove that she hadn't been unfaithful. Nobody except her could have predicted the results of the test. Little Ryan was proven to be Clive's biological child. Clive was dumbfounded. He needed to apologize to Debbie immediately and to start building a relationship with the kid he had abandoned without reason. But first of all, he needed to find out why his child looked like that. So he went home to his parents and asked them for DNA samples to test. However, they looked at each other and told them there was no need for medical procedures. Then and there, they told him a story he would have never have imagined. The father Clive had grown up with wasn't his biological father at all. His mother had fallen pregnant out of wedlock with a black man. But even though she loved him dearly, she hadn't been allowed to marry him due to the social taboos of her time. Her family had found a man willing to marry her even though she was pregnant. And when Clive had been born with the same light skin as his mother, they had decided to never tell him of his true origins. The black gene hadn't shown up with his first three kids, but had resurfaced in the fourth. After all, DNA is not something we can escape from. Although the truth came to light, Debbie could not manage to forgive her husband for so blatantly accusing of her infidelity and the two of them never reconciled their differences. In the end though, Clyde warmed up to little Ryan and managed to build a loving relationship with all four of his children. What a surprising ending. What would you have done if your child had come out looking so different from you and your partner? Would you have forgiven Clive in Debbie's shoes? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.